Hello. In the onward climb phase from about 1500 to 3000 feet altitude up to the cruise altitude, the aircraft is flying either at a constant indicated airspeed or at a constant Mach number. As a result of the changing air density and air temperature with altitude, this results in an unsteady climbing flight, which is quasi-rectilinear. In other words, the flight path angle is fairly constant. In order to calculate the climb performance, we need the equations of motion for this specific condition. Let us start with the general equations of motion for symmetric flight. By setting the change of flight path angle equal to zero, these equations simplify. For normal operations, we can also make the small angle approximation and assume that the thrust angle of attack is aligned with the airspeed vector. Hence, the two cosine terms become one and the sine of the thrust angle of attack as well. Altogether, this results in a simplified set of equations. One equation that contains the climb angle as a variable and the second equation which states that lift must equal weight. Now we are interested in the climb performance in terms of the rate of climb. Let us look at the two equations of motion that we have over here. And as you can see, there is no rate of climb in the equation. So I'm going to introduce it. And I do that by multiplying equation number one with airspeed. And if I do so, I get the following. I get mass times velocity times the change of speed with time. And that must equal thrust times velocity minus drag times velocity minus weight times V sine gamma. And if you pay attention, you see a couple of terms that may be familiar. First of all, thrust times velocity equals power available from the engines to fly from A to B. Drag multiplied with velocity is the power required to overcome the aerodynamic drag. And if we look at the airspeed vector as it is defined, then we can say that V times the sine of the flight path angle equals the rate of climb. So if I insert that in this equation, I get weight over G times V times the acceleration equals power available minus power required minus weight times the rate of climb. Now if I bring all the powers and the weight to the left hand side of the equation, I get power available minus power required. And if I divide by the airplane weight, I get that this must equal the rate of climb plus the airspeed divided by the gravitational acceleration times the acceleration of the airplane. So this says that power available minus power required, which is the excess power per unit aircraft weight, equals the rate of climb plus an acceleration term. So this is our result called the power equation. Now what is the physical meaning of this equation. So, this is our result, called the power equation. But what is the physical meaning of this equation? The power available is the useful energy per second we put into the system. We get this energy simply by burning fuel. Not all the energy in the fuel is transformed into power available. Part of it is lost in, for example, heat into the atmosphere. And the power required is the energy per second that is required to overcome aerodynamic drag, which you see over here. Combined, this is the excess power or energy per second. Rate of climb is the change of altitude with time. 
Now realize that potential energy is altitude multiplied with weight. So the rate of climb reflects the change in potential energy with time. Furthermore, the acceleration reflects the change of kinetic energy with time. Summarizing, the energy we have in excess is used to change the potential energy and the kinetic energy of the aircraft. And this is essentially the law of conservation of energy. Now that we understand the power equation, let's use it to calculate climb performance. For the example, I will take a climb at constant indicated airspeed. So over here I have our basic power equation which tells us that the excess power per unit aircraft weight is used to climb with the aircraft or to accelerate the airplane. Now this is the general situation and I'm going to rewrite this a bit. If the airplane would be in steady flight conditions, then the equation would look as follows. Excess power per unit aircraft weight is rate of climb plus zero. So we could call this in steady conditions the rate of climb that can be achieved in a steady situation. I call this equation one. I call this equation 2, and of course the rate of climb here is the rate of climb that can be achieved in either an accelerating or decelerating flight. Now if I combine equations 1 and 2, I can replace the power terms by rate of climb in steady flight, and that should be equal to the real rate of climb plus this acceleration term. Now it would be nice to have, since we're in a climbing flight, instead of a time in the equation, the dt, it would be nice to have altitude there. So what we can do is we can rewrite it slightly by saying that the change of velocity with time is in fact change of velocity with altitude multiplied with the change of altitude with time and that is allowed because the change of altitude over the change of altitude is equal to 1. So I'm essentially multiplying this equation for velocity with time with 1. And since the change of altitude with time is rate of climb, actually the acceleration term is rate of climb times change of airspeed with altitude. Now let's insert that in our third equation. So I take equation 4 here, put it in the third one, and what I get then is the following. I get rate of climb in steady conditions is the real rate of climb plus V over G times dV dH times the rate of climb, which in fact is equal to 1 plus V over G dV dH times the rate of climb. Now I could compute the ratio between the real rate of climb and the rate of climb that is attainable in a steady situation. And that will then be 1 divided by 1 plus some acceleration term dv dh times velocity over gravitational acceleration. So this is what we've obtained, and if we now assume that we're flying at a constant indicated airspeed, which in incompressible situation is almost the same as 
equivalent airspeed, then we can take the airspeed over here and rewrite it a bit, because of course that is the true airspeed you have. And the true airspeed, let's highlight it by TAS, is of course related to equivalent airspeed through a ratio of air densities. So you know that the true airspeed is much higher than the equivalent airspeed. So basically what we get over here is we can multiply this with square root of rho zero over rho. And that means that the dv dh term can be written as follows, dv es, equivalent airspeed, times the square root of the air densities, dh, and that's nice because equivalent airspeed is constant, so we can say that this is the equivalent airspeed times the change of air density basically, or this ratio of air density with altitude. So we see that the rate of climb during the en route climb phase compared to the rate of climb that can be achieved in steady conditions purely depends on the change of air density with altitude and the airspeed selected by the pilot. Now with knowledge of the atmosphere this can be solved. Take for example a flight at 10,000 meters altitude. If we would look up the tables for the international standard atmosphere, like printed in this book, we can find that the air density at 10,000 meters is 0.4127. 100 meters higher it is 0.4076 and at sea level it equals 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. Therefore the change of air density with altitude becomes this ratio. You could also solve this in a more elegant way by using the equations representing the international standard atmosphere. I have used this result to calculate the ratio of rate of climb over the rate of climb in steady flight for an example scenario of an aircraft at 10,000 meter with an indicated or equivalent airspeed of 140 meters per second, which results in a Mach number of 0.8 at that specific altitude. In this scenario, the rate of climb is only 73% of the rate of climb that can be achieved in steady flight conditions. Quite a significant difference if you ask me. So part of the energy from the fuel is not used to increase altitude, but to increase airspeed or kinetic energy. So to conclude, the aircraft is either accelerating or decelerating in the en route climb, and in other words, the en route climb is unsteady. As a result, the rate of climb is quite different from the rate of climb that can be achieved in a steady flight condition with constant true airspeed. Atmospheric data is required to calculate the difference between the actual rate of climb and the achievable rate of climb in steady conditions. I recommend to try these calculations yourself now.